Dim sum dim sum is a large range of small Chinese dishes that are traditionally enjoyed in restaurants for brunch. Most modern dim sum dishes originated in China and are commonly associated with Cantonese cuisine, although dim sum dishes also exist in other Chinese cuisines. In the 10th century, when the city of Guangzhou began to experience an increase in commercial travel, many frequented tea houses for small portion meals with tea called yum cha, or drink tea meals. Yum cha includes two related concepts. The first is yat yung lung jin, which translates literally as one cup, two pieces. This refers to the custom of serving tea house customers two pieces of delicately made food items, savory or sweet, to complement their tea. The second is dim sum and translates literally to touching heart, the term used to designate the small food items that accompany the tea drinking. Tea house owners gradually added various snacks called dim sum to their offerings. The practice of having tea with dim sum eventually evolved into the modern yum cha. Cantonese dim sum culture developed rapidly during the latter half of the 19th century in Guangzhou. Cantonese dim sum was based originally on local foods. As dim sum continued to develop, chefs introduced influences and traditions from other regions of China. There are over 1,000 dim sum dishes in existence today. Cantonese dim sum has a very broad range of flavors, textures, cooking styles and ingredients, and can be classified into regular items, seasonal offerings. Weekly specials, banquet dishes, holiday dishes, house signature dishes, travel friendly, as well as breakfast or lunch foods and late night snacks. Dim sum restaurants typically have a wide variety of dishes, usually totaling several dozen. The tea is very important, just as important as the food. Many Cantonese restaurants serve dim sum as early as 5 in the morning, while more traditional restaurants typically serve dim sum until mid afternoon. Dim sum restaurants have a unique serving method where servers offer dishes to customers from steam heated carts. It is now commonplace for restaurants to serve dim sum at dinner time and sell various dim sum items a la carte for takeout. In addition to traditional dim sum, some chefs also create and prepare new fusion based dim sum dishes. There are variations designed for visual appeal on social media, such as dumplings and buns made to resemble animals, that also exist. The original meaning of the term dim sum remains unclear and contested. Some references state that the term originated in the Eastern Jin Dynasty. According to one legend, to show soldiers gratitude after battles, a general had civilians make buns and cakes to send to the front lines. Gratitude, or, Dian Dian Xinyi, later shortened to Dian Sin, of which dim sum is the Cantonese pronunciation, came to represent dishes made in a similar fashion. Some versions date the legend to the Southern Song Dynasty after the term's earliest attestation in the Book of Tang, Tang Shu. Written. In the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period, the book uses dim sum as a verb instead, ji zhuang wei bai. Wu wei yi can, er chia ke dianxin, which translates to, I have not finished preparing myself and ready for a proper meal, therefore you can treat yourself with some small snacks. In this context, dim sum heart, means to barely fill stomach. Dim sum dishes are usually associated with yum cha, a Cantonese brunch tradition. Chinese food historian Yan Kitso has described dim sum as, literally translated as so close to the heart, they are, in reality, a large range of hors d'oeuvres Cantonese people traditionally enjoy in restaurants for breakfast and for lunch. But never for dinner, washed down with tea. Let's go yum cha is understood among the Cantonese to mean going to a restaurant for dim sum, such as the twin linkage between the food and the beverage. There are over 1,000 dim sum dishes available, which are usually eaten as breakfast or brunch. Cantonese dim sum has a very broad range of flavors, textures, cooking styles, and ingredients, and can be classified into regular items, seasonal offerings. Weekly specials, banquet dishes, holiday dishes, house signature dishes, travel friendly, as well as breakfast or lunch foods and late night snacks. The subtropical climate of the southeast quadrant of Guangdong partly influences dim sum's portion size. It can cause a decrease in appetite, so that people prefer eating scaled-down meals throughout the day rather than the customary three large meals. Tea houses in Guangzhou served three teas and two meals, which included lunch and dinner, and breakfast, afternoon and evening teas with dim sum. Many dim sum dishes are made of seafood, chopped meats, or vegetables wrapped in dough or thin wrappings and steamed, deep-fried, or pan-fried. A traditional dim sum brunch includes various types of steamed buns, such as cha siu bao, rice or wheat dumplings, and rice noodle rolls that contain a range of ingredients, including beef, chicken, pork, prawns and vegetarian options. 
Many dim sum restaurants also offer plates of steamed green vegetables, stuffed eggplant, stuffed green peppers, roasted meats, congee and other soups. Dessert dim sum is also available and can be ordered at any time since there is not a set sequence for the meal. It is customary to order family style, sharing the small dishes consisting of three or four pieces of dim sum among all members of the dining party. Small portion sizes allow people to try a wide variety of food. Dim sum restaurants typically have a wide variety of dishes, usually several dozen. Dumplings, rolls, buns, cakes, meats, seafood, vegetables, rice, desserts, chrysanthemum tea, a typical dining set for yum cha tea is considered to be very important, so much so that it is considered just as important as the food itself. Tea served during dim sum include, the tea service includes several customs. Typically, the server starts by asking diners which tea to serve. According to etiquette, the person closest to the teapot pours tea for the others. Sometimes, a younger person will serve an older person. Those receiving tea express thanks by tapping their index and middle fingers twice on the table. Diners flip open the lid or offset the teapot cover to signal an empty pot. Servers will then refill the pot. A dim sum restaurant in Hong Kong play media a video guide to dim sum. Dim sum is part of the Chinese tradition of snacks originating from the Song Dynasty. When royal chefs created various dishes such as minced pheasant, lark tongue, and desserts made from steamed milk and bean paste. Guangzhou experienced an increase in commercial travel in the 10th century at that time. Travelers would frequent tea houses for small portion meals with tea called yum cha, or drink tea meals. Yum cha includes two related concepts. The first, translates literally as one cup, two pieces. This refers to the custom of serving tea house customers two pieces of delicately made food items, savory or sweet, to complement their tea. The second, which means dim sum translates literally to touching heart. This is the term used to designate the small food items that accompany the drinking of tea. During the 13th century, when Mongols invaded China, the royal court fled to southern China, bringing a royal influence to the dim sum of Guangzhou. Guangzhou was a wealthy, large port city that had international visitors, a temperate climate, and a coastline where fresh and tropical ingredients were grown, resulting in an ideal environment for food and entertainment. In Guangzhou, street vendors and tea houses sold dim sum. The practice of having tea with dim sum at tea houses eventually evolved into modern yum cha. While at the tea houses, travelers selected their preferred snacks from carts. Visitors to tea houses often socialized as they ate and business people negotiated deals over dim sum. During the Ming Dynasty, the Tea and Horses Bureau was established to monitor tea production and improve tea quality. The improvements in tea quality also led to tea house improvements. Cantonese dim sum culture developed rapidly during the latter half of the 19th century in Guangzhou. Tea house dining areas were typically located upstairs and initial dim sum fare included steamed buns. Eventually, these evolved into specialized dim sum restaurants, the variety and quality of dim sum dishes rapidly followed suit. Cantonese dim sum was originally based on local foods such as sweet roast pork called char siu and fresh rice noodles. As dim sum continued to develop, Chefs introduced influences and traditions from other regions of China, which created a starting point for the wide variety of dim sum available today. Chefs created a large range of dim sum that even today comprises most of a tea house's dim sum offerings. Part of this development included reducing portion sizes of larger dishes originally from northern China, such as stuffed steamed buns, so they could easily be incorporated into the dim sum menu. The rapid growth in dim sum restaurants was due partly because people found the preparation of dim sum dishes to be time-consuming and preferred the convenience of dining out and eating a large variety of baked, steamed, pan-fried, deep-fried, and braised foods. Dim sum continued to develop and also spread southward to Hong Kong. Although dim sum is normally considered Cantonese, it includes many additional influences. Over thousands of years, as people in China migrated in search of different places to live, they carried the recipes of their favorite foods and continued to prepare and serve these dishes. Many Han Chinese migrated south seeking warmer climates. Settlements took shape in the Yangtze River Valley, the Central Highlands, and the coastal southeast, including Guangdong. The influence of Suzhou and Hangzhou is found in vegetarian soy skin rolls and pearl meatballs. The dessert squares flavored with red dates or wolfberries are influences from Beijing desserts. Savory dishes, such as pot stickers and steamed dumplings, include Muslim influences because of people traveling from Central Asia across the Silk Road and into Guangdong. These are just a few examples of how a wide range of influences became incorporated into traditional Cantonese dim sum. 
By 1860, foreign influences had to shape Guangdong's dim sum with culinary innovations such as ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, and curry, all of which came to be used in some savory dishes. Custard pies evolved into the miniature classics found in every tea house. Other dim sum dishes evolved from Indian samosas, mango puddings and Mexican conchas. Cantonese-style dim sum has an extremely broad range of tastes, textures, cooking styles, and ingredients. As a result, there are more than a thousand different varieties of dim sum. During the 1920s, in Guangzhou, the foremost places to enjoy tea were its tea pavilions, which had refined and expansive surroundings. The customers were wealthy, and there were rather high standards for the privilege of enjoying tea pavilion service and dim sum. Upon entering a tea pavilion, customers would inspect tea leaves to ensure their quality and to verify the water temperature. Once satisfied, these guests were presented with a pencil and a booklet listing the available dim sum. A waiter would then tear their orders out of the booklet so that the kitchen could pan fry, steam, bake or deep fry these dishes on demand. Customers dined upstairs in privacy and comfort. Servers carefully balanced the dishes on their arms or arranged them on trays as they climbed up and down the stairs. Eventually, dim sum carts were used to serve the steamers and plates. People with average incomes also enjoyed tea and dim sum. Early every morning, customers visited inexpensive restaurants that offered filled steamed buns and hot tea. During the mid-morning, students and government employees ordered two or three kinds of dim sum and ate as they read their newspapers. In the late morning, People working at small businesses visited restaurants for breakfast and to use the restaurant as a small office space. By the late 1930s, Guangzhou's tea house culture included four high profile dim sum chefs, with signs at the front doors of their restaurants. There was heavy competition among tea houses, and as a result, new varieties of dim sum were invented almost daily, including dishes influenced by the tea pastries of Shanghai and Beijing, and the Western world. Many new fusion dishes were also created, including puddings baked rolls, turnovers, custard tarts, and Malay steamed cakes. There were also significant increases in the variety of thin wrappers used in both sweet and savory items, if we concentrate only on the changes and development in the variety of wrappers, the main types of dim sum wrappers during the 1920s included such things as raised wheat starch, shao mai, crystal bun, crispy batter, sticky rice, and boiled dumpling wrappers. By the 1930s, the varieties of wrappers commonly used by chefs included puff pastry, Cantonese short pastry, and so on, for a total of 23 types, that were prepared by pan frying, deep frying, steaming, baking, and roasting. As the Chinese Civil War progressed from 1927 to 1949, many dim sum chefs left China and settled in Hong Kong, resulting in further refinements and innovation of the dim sum there. Very large dim sum restaurants in major cities like Hong Kong, San Francisco, Boston, Toronto, and New York were also established. In the 19th century, Cantonese immigrants brought dim sum to the west and east coasts of the United States. Some of the earliest dim sum restaurants in the U.S. still operating today opened in 1920 in San Francisco and New York City. The Chinese history in San Francisco is believed to have started about 30 years before the restaurant was opened. The Chinese preferred to live in the present Chinatown area because of its restaurants and theaters. In the late 1930s, some early U.S. newspaper references to dim sum began to appear. While some Chinese restaurants in the U.S. had offered dim sum for decades, it was not until the late 1980s when there was a broader public awareness of dim sum. Although there was increased awareness of dim sum, one chef from Hong Kong, who immigrated to San Francisco, noted that diners in the U.S. usually focused on the food itself, and not the communal aspects of eating dim sum. Although dim sum is a Chinese meal, it is a communal dining and social experience that can span hours. It is customary for large groups to enjoy dishes together as a leisurely social activity. Diners go to restaurants early, around 10 a.m., and rather than ordering a whole table of food, they order small amounts, have a cup of tea, read the newspaper, and wait for friends and family to join them. As a result, a visit to a dim sum restaurant can last from the late morning well into the afternoon. For some people in Hong Kong, dim sum is a daily routine and a way of life. Since this dim sum tradition was not always present in some U.S. dim sum restaurants, however, approaches to generate interest and attract customers include customized seasoning and flavors of traditional dishes, as well as creating novel dishes with an emphasis on enhanced flavors and visual appeal. One food reviewer notes that there has been increased popularity in posting dim sum photos on social media feeds, 
and that dim sum has become so popular that every U.S. state has come to have at least one high-quality dim sum restaurant. There is a restaurant, bar, and highly rated dance club complex in Las Vegas, Nevada, that features high-end Cantonese food, craft cocktails, dinner parties and prominent disc jockeys in a chic setting. The dim sum restaurants in Chicago have been serving mainly traditional dim sum in Chinatown, but there has been recent growth in contemporary dim sum with new fusion dishes, as well as restaurants now located outside Chinatown. In Hong Kong, many chefs are also introducing variants based on traditional Cantonese cuisine, which generates interest and provides both Hong Kongers and tourists with new, fresh dim sum dishes. In addition to traditional dim sum, some chefs also create and prepare new fusion-based dim sum dishes. Modern versions of buns include pork belly steamed buns with cucumber, green onion, cilantro, and ginger hoisin sauce, cocoa mushroom buns, chili lamb buns. Dumplings include snow pea shoot and shrimp dumplings, and chili crab with fried garlic, siumai with pork, shrimp, scallop, and caviar, dumplings stuffed with shrimp and peanut. Dumplings with South Australian scallop, garupa, caviar, gold leaf, and egg white, and bone marrow or beef short ribs in pot stickers. Pastry puff dishes include Australian Wagyu beef puff, Assam curry chicken puff, pumpkin puffs. Toast dishes include Hong Kong style French toast with condensed milk and peanut butter and prawn toast. Additional examples are spring rolls filled with goat and duck skin and duck hearts cooked over a wood fired grill and served with sesame horseradish sauce. One AAA four diamond award winning Chinese restaurant in Miami Beach has a prefix dim sum menu, prefix yum cha menu, and breakfast cocktails. Variations designed for visual appeal on social media, such as dumplings and buns made to resemble animals and fictional characters, also exist. Dim sum chefs have previously used cocoa powder as coloring to create steamed bread puffs to appear like forest mushrooms, espresso powder as both flavoring and coloring for deep fried riblets, as well as pastry cream and French puffs to create innovative dishes while paying tribute to the history of dim sum. Dim sum can often be purchased from grocery stores in major cities. They can be cooked easily by steaming, frying, or microwaving. Major grocery stores in Hong Kong, Vietnam, the Philippines, Singapore, Taiwan, China, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, Thailand, Australia, the United States and Canada stock a variety of frozen or fresh dim sum. These include dumplings, shimei, pork buns, and others. In Hong Kong and other cities in Asia, dim sum can be purchased from convenience stores, coffee shops and other eateries. Halal certified dim sum that uses chicken instead of pork is very popular in Hong Kong, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei. A light blue bill card on a table of traditional family-style dim sum lunch dishes in a restaurant Some Cantonese restaurants serve dim sum as early as 5 in the morning. While more traditional restaurants typically serve dim sum from mid-morning until mid-afternoon. It is common for restaurants to serve dim sum during dinner as well as for takeout. Dim sum is served using a unique serving method whereby servers offer dishes to customers from carts, including some carts that are steam heated. Diners often prefer tables nearest the kitchen since servers and carts pass by these tables first. Many restaurants place lazy Susans on tables to help diners reach food and tea. The pricing of dishes at these types of restaurants may vary, but traditionally they are classified as small, medium, large, extra large, or special. Servers record orders with a rubber stamp or an ink pen on a bill card that remains on the table. Servers in some restaurants use distinctive stamps to track sales statistics for each server. When they have finished eating, the customer calls the server over and their bill is calculated based on the number of stamps or quantities marked in each priced section. Another way of pricing the food that was consumed uses the number and color of the dishes left on the table. Some restaurants offer a new approach by using a conveyor belt format. Other Cantonese restaurants may take orders from a pre-printed sheet of paper and serve a la carte, much like Spanish tapas restaurants, to provide fresh, Cook to order dim sum or because of real estate and resource constraints. Dim sum food shop in Hong Kong. Thanks for watching.